part of the issue that people like Dave Foster and Bob Baugh from our Industrial Union Council and our International Union delegates raised at the climate talks in Poland. There, they demanded that the governments acknowledge the economic situation. And they use it as an opportunity to drive a new environmental and economic development agenda. And that's the same message that the AFL-CIO has delivered to President Obama and to the Congress. Because you can look at across the next 20 years, and you can see the waves of investment and the waves of technology that we need. In the next decade, there's enormous, enormous potential for good jobs. Modernizing and extending the electrical grid will enable the aggressive build-out of renewable energy sources. Coupled with smart distribution system, we could increase energy efficiency by an estimated 20% and diversify our generating base. Retrofitting public and private buildings and homes will create jobs, cut demand, and save consumers money. The expansion and increased usage of mass transit and passenger rail offers similar opportunities. Biofuel initiatives, the 2008 CAFE standard and state renewable portfolio standards are already driving investments and already creating good jobs. Now, these steps can take us a long way in reducing our emissions. At the same time, we have to invest in re-engineered technologies for the post-2020 era. Now, the AFL-CIO recognizes that coal and nuclear power plants are the primary sources of baseload power and provide major employment opportunities, but they must meet federal financial and regulatory and environmental standards. And that time is of the essence, because if we're to answer some critical questions about advanced coal technology, you see, the United States and other nations and in industry need to quit talking about carbon capture technology and build full-scale models now, now while it counts. Now each possible clean energy technology has its advocates and it has its detractors. But the urgency of the crisis requires that every solution that genuinely holds out the hope of reducing carbon emissions should, must, and will be explored. You see, the economic recovery package makes those type of investments. We know that means that we will build the wind turbines and install the insulation, solar panels, and energy efficient windows here. But the question becomes, will we make those things here? Now, it's absurd that this should even be a question. But given the Buy American fight that we're now engaged in, it's no, other, no wonder other countries look at this fight and laugh at us in the process. See, that's why this is the moment for real leadership from all of our institutions. In every area, the need is for scale and speed and commitment. And the AFL-CIO is gearing up for the challenge. The Building and Construction Trades Department is working with affiliates in their training systems to identify best practice, community, labor, business, government partnerships to enable them to respond at scale across the country. The Federation is expanding its training and research capabilities through the creation of a Center for Green Jobs. It's headed by Jeff Rickert, whom many of you know from his years with the Apollo Alliance. We're also working with environmental industry and other partners on a series of studies on the impacts and opportunities, investment and training needs under a carbon emission regime. But quite frankly, it's not enough that all of us lead. 
our government must lead also. You see, greening the economy means that green jobs must be viewed broadly and be inclusive so that working families see themselves and our work as part of the solution. Every job that contributes to a low carbon future is a green job. <laughs> Congress and the administration must be unambiguous in establishing an environmental economic development policy that seeks to increase the per capita income and protects the interests of working families. Workers, uh, workers exercising their free choice to form unions and respect for legal standards, protecting workers' wages and benefits are fundamental to that goal. And Congress, <laughs> and Congress and the administration must ensure that public resources are fully invested in the U.S. economy. Be strategic, expand and enforce Buy American laws and use our financial leverage to get better technologies from overseas made here and not vice versa. <laughs> now Congress and the administration can play, can make green jobs and good jobs by ensuring that they pay families supporting wages and benefits, that they offer a real career path, they reduce waste, and benefit the environment. Finally, the Green Jobs Act and its labor management partnerships will assure good training for good jobs. Together with community and government partners, we need to train workers in the poorest and most marginalized parts of our country to take part in the great task ahead. See, we're a big society and we're a big economy. Investing in economic security for working people, helping families make it into the middle class and then to stay there. That's never been an obstacle to economic recovery. Brothers and sisters, that's always been a precondition to any economic recovery and any economy. And here's the good news. I know that President Obama believes that. He's unequivocal that a new energy policy and jobs go together. He's also clear on the roles of unions in creating good jobs. Last week we met at the White House, and I want to give you a direct quote from our president. He said, I do not believe that the labor movement is part of the problem. To me, it's part of the solution. We need to level the playing field for workers and the unions that represent their interests because we know that you cannot have a strong middle class without a strong labor movement. We know. We know that strong, vibrant, grow, growing unions can exist side by side with strong, vibrant, and growing businesses. It isn't an either or proposition between the interests of workers and the interests of shareholders. That's the old argument, said he. The new argument is that the American economy is not and never has been a zero-sum game. Well, we share the President's 21st century viewpoint. We know that energy and environment is not a zero-sum game. And we know that we can be competitive and lean and mean and green while creating a situation where workers are thriving and prospering in the country as those at the top have done for so long. You see, working together, brothers and sisters, we will create a new economy and a cleaner planet. Working together, we will create good green jobs. Working together, we will create an America that is the economic and environmental envy of the entire country, of the entire world on this planet. Together, yes, we can, and yes, we will. God bless you.